The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Dow's down 283 at 35,025. S&P is down uh, 39 at 44.50. QQQ down uh, three and a quarter at 367. IWM down uh, dollar, almost two dollars at 188. Gold down. Uh, eight at 1936 dollar is down 20 ticks at 102.99. TLT is down 14 pennies at 95.03. 94.54 was the low on the 3rd of May. Uh, let's see, we're into June, just over a month. I oh, know, wait, wait, I must be wrong. That must have been June. No, August. What am I talking about? Wow, August. And that's not a five, that's an eight. Let me just change that right now. Oh, what a day it's been already. Um, edit eight. There you are. Got it. Eight. And today's low so far is 94.62. This is the dreaded H pattern. We've seen this in so many charts. It's the pattern that we've been looking at um, for some time now. I said that the pattern that we'll be looking at over the next couple of weeks will be the lowercase h. Oh, let me just show you this for those of you new to my work. You can just look at patterns, treat them as templates, and use them in your uh, trading. Look, what do I, I talk about? Straight line up or down? Cup formation, arch formation. That's, look, every single chart, that's what you got. Yeah, sometimes the cup is a V, but it's the same thing. You're going from one point down and back to that point. How it deals with that point when it's going up is, is important. How it deals with this point in the arch or inverted V, uh, when it comes back to the left side, low is very important. Pink, a, a red, because if it takes out certainly after peak A or a B, it takes out the left side low, it can go a lot lower. You just saw that a couple of times already here in the TLT in the daily chart. Um, and the upside, and you'll see that in the reversal, you'll probably just go to the, you're looking at the left side high, straight line up, left side high, how it takes out the left side high is important. Why? Let's just have a look at the TBT, TBT. Uh, right there. So what we've got is the same thing, except they Ys instead of Hs, right? Tests it and then breaks it with the cup and handle. Actually, usually not one of my favorite patterns, but this one was really powerful. And now it's doing the same thing again. It hasn't taken out that peak D, and that's what we're watching very closely. So, okay, now let's just do the summation. In fact, I'm just going to save that because I've been doing so much work. And it dials down 307. Now, let me show you. We've spoken about this forever. I'm going to be doing a webinar on this uh, for subscribers. I'm, in fact, I hope to do a bunch of things. But look at the time it's taken for this green nine-period exponential moving average to turn pink. And it hasn't turned pink. I think it's really close within a day or two. And if it does, because it's such a slow move down, it might only give you a tiny little aperture between the uh, black 14 period moving average which will then be on top and the pink which will be below that's the nine period moving average um, and that means that it's not an absolute massive fall like it was when you had that sell off right here back in April uh, February yeah, March late February of 2022 I think it was look Look at that. And then it expanded, and you just went tumbling all the way down. So to me, this is an indicator we've used um, in, in certain ways. It really can help you a lot, number one. Number two, it can also, um, I would say it could prevent you from er being early in changing your direction in the long-term direction, but it can also mean that the price goes sharply lower before it actually gives you the signal so you've missed the exact turn. For exact turns, I use other techniques 
And that's going to be very important. I'm just discussing this out in the open, just kind of how we've been looking at this, what we've been doing for subscribers to my opening call, um, why it's so important to be able to monitor. Look, we've just taken out the left side low of importance, so now you've started a leg C to the downside. I have to just double check that. I didn't print it, so I just need to see. Uh, 35,000, uh, 33, no, 35,007.41. So today's low is 34. Oh, we're under it. We went uh, to the 34,995 level. So we've started a leg C. And as I said, this is probably the day, I think it's going to be the day, that the Dow actually shows you the nine-period moving average. Now, the big question is this, and what I want to do is I had a bunch of questions. I'm going to get to everything if I can in a moment. And that is to say, within the context of um, using particular technical tools, they are just technical tools. Am I going to use a hammer if I want to draw a straight line on a piece of wood? Am I going to use um, a T-square or am I going to use a plane if I need glue? No, you only need the tool that you need. So we have this huge, now it's a little bit of a joke, uh, historically a joke. Uh, my Sears, my huge Sears and Roebuck uh, toolbox of technical tools. And all I can say is that you have to use the tools as best you can. And if it works, it confirms the technique involved. And if it doesn't work, it says it didn't work that time, use some other tool. Okay? So... What I did for subscribers in attempting to pick the top in the Dow, and you know, maybe, what, 95% of the time when you're listening to any of the uh, financial news, you'll hear people say, I want to get the middle. I don't, I don't have to get the, nobody gets the top, nobody gets the bottom. Well, you can attempt to do that. You can have some tools that allows you at least to attempt to do that because if you get, look, if we got the exact top, we would have been stopped out here on that big move up four days ago, that huge move up, um, because um, if we got in after, anywhere after that, I would have had a tight stop. This way, it gives you just it gives you that leeway. You can breathe a little bit because you got the wiggle room, and I need wiggle room. So that's that's because I have very tight stuffs for my subscribers. So um, within that context, I'm still waiting. Even as I speak right now, I'm still waiting for that nine. Look, it's still nicely above the black 14 period moving average. You would probably have to go another hundred points down before that turns pink. But if it turns pink. Look at this left side. This this is a closing price of the Dow um, as it's moving. Um, look at this. There is no real support until you get to there. Well, I don't do work like that. I don't say, oh, my God, if we break down, we're going to go to the trough of the 7th of July, which is at 33,717. It's impossible. I do not do that. I look at all the different things on the way down. We go one step at a time. We don't even know if the day is the day is young. It's not even an hour into the session. Anything could happen. There could be a turnaround. There could be a sudden bite opening. But look at this. The S&P deep into the red and it deflected. Look at the QQQ deep into the red. Look at the SMHs. Even with yesterday's bounce, deep in the red. I'll be back. Bounce down 299. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. So, um, there we go. We're looking at, uh, I want you to go through some of the things. I'm, I'm very concerned about the bonds. Um, look how close we are getting to the left side, 91.85 low. Uh, from October of last year. And that, to me, is just, it's not a good sign. Look at the dollar, trying its best to move higher here. It's on the 200 period moving average. I suspect that it's going to be a magnet. It's not going to be able to push above it um, and hold unless it has a really big move up. But look what it's, the fact that it's stalled here is something. By the end of the day, if it's at 102.92 or higher, that's okay. If it starts to slip to 102.77 or lower, it says, okay, maybe we've got gold that's able to have a little bit of a balance here. It's already coming back quite nicely from the low of 1927. It's in 1936. That's, uh, yeah, that's, it's a nice intraday turnaround, trying to get back to that 1940 level uh, from back in July. But this is what I'm looking at. The, if the semiconductors had a spectacular move yesterday, it went from the 145s all the way to 150, uh, 100, I think it touched 151, 150.73. So I'm looking at this askance. I'm saying, hey, wait a minute. You guys usually lead us up and you usually lead us down. I, just for clarification, for disclosure purposes, uh, for subscribers from opening call, the, the high was 161.17 on the 31st of July with a, a doji candle. We waited one day to see what would happen. And before they opened the following day on the second, uh, we went uh, kind of aggressively short on Thursday. On Friday, this past Friday, on, the, on a huge move down, we took a little bit off. Um, we took a little bit off, and especially with our more aggressive position, we took off a little bit uh, yesterday at the pre-open uh, for a really good gain, to a twenty percent just uh, gain or something like that. Uh, but allowed it to run up, and we've just added back to that short position. So. Um, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm not usually this aggressive until I get really t big turns, what I, I, I'm anticipating on a daily basis, not the weekly. We don't know anything about the week yet. It hasn't finished. It's only just begun. 
Uh, but on a week, on a daily basis, if all the technicals are starting to fail, this is the rudder of the weekly chart, and the weekly chart is the rudder for the monthly, and um, none of those look, um, they still look pretty darn good. So this is more shorter term, but I'm looking at this saying, if we've had such a big pullback, remember the Dow went to its high on August the 1st, this was the 7th, 31st of July, um, if we've had such a big pullback in one of the, what I call a leading index, it means that I've got to be careful here that the Dow, how can I do this? I want you to do this visually so that you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, let me do it visually. Let me go back to my 914 chart. It means that what if we've already had such a, one of the biggest moves in the semiconductors to the downside since that extended time and price move going into the April uh, low, and around about the 24th of April of, of this year. <clears throat> this has had speed and time, uh, very little time, and it's mostly speed. What if this is starting to form some kind of a low? And let's just look at NVIDIA as a good example. Look at that V-shaped pattern. But look, the pink nine-period moving average, if this dips down, it'll be deflecting lower. So I'm watching this closely. It's still up four points today at 40, uh, 441. It hit 390, uh, what was the low yesterday? Uh, 406. So that was a massive move, 460 today, so 452. <laughs> I mean, that's a very nice move up. So I'm saying to myself, you never know in this bifurcated, trifurcated, quadruplicated market whether or not what, what, what's going to give way and what's, what's going to stabilize. Well, in this particular instance, what we're looking at is if all these particular sectors are starting to form some kind of a base for a pretty decent rally, then the Dow might turn out to be <coughs> stalling to tell me not everything's in sync, and be careful because there's a, enough internal strength in, in other places that you could have another rally. So I'm just being prepared for that, but at the same time, the technicals are saying, uh-uh, the -uh, weakness is there, it's pungent, it's, you can, it can actually feel it, it's palpable. Even yesterday when we had that big spike, it was mostly short covering as far as I'm concerned. There were some new buys when it or held, when the SMH has held so well. I think new buys came, came in. So I would suspect that in the SMHs, I just want to finish this preamble now, and then I've got a lot of questions that I want to get to. So in the SMHs case, if we, get, if we close under 147.50, kind of the midpoint right here, 148 would be, I'm going a little bit lower than that. It says all the new buyers are in trouble and those that were short covering are going to say, oh, geez, now, now what do I do? So that's, that would be a good sign for making lower prices a bad sign for the general market. That's okay. Sum that, that up from, for the, from my perspective. Uh, a couple of questions I had, FXI, let me just get to that quickly. That is the... Um, China iShares large cap ETF. Look at that. I said, be careful if that peak D should pull back quite sharply. 200 period moving average. Try to hold it, hold the support. Whoosh, it went all the way down. So a one, almost a one to one to the downside from the 200 period moving average. And the weekly chart looks like an H that goes to an M pattern. Not good. Um, XPEV is that what I was asked about? Yeah, XPEV. I'm looking at this and saying, be careful. I've got that as a peak G. In the daily chart, around about 24, it's at 15.71 right now. This whole area X designs, uh, develops, manufactures smart EVs. You want to know what happens to smart EVs sometimes? Um, let's look at RIVN. Uh, look at that pullback from the peak D under the 200 period moving average. Just be careful in this area. We, have, we had an AI stock. It did fabulously. Um, no, we had ENVX. Yeah, ENVX, which is uh, lithium batteries for the uh, the architecture for um, for the EVs, and we got out of it. Took uh, took a real real nice uh, short term uh, small gains. We only had a small position to gain, and then we just got out and break even for the the remaining part, uh, way above where it is now, fifteen point thirty six. And I'm just saying, let's see how it tests the fourteen fifty six area. That definitely, this is in the area that you want to be in. But when is the question? That's number number one. Number two is, 
uh, within the uh, within the context of looking at all these other things. I think money will come out of the AI area at this particular point because they've had such good gains, and we'll see when the money comes back in. Uh, just a, a question here. Okay, I'll deal with that right now. Um, Amazon. Okay. Okay, it's the usual thing uh, that Paul says. Are you are you uh, aware Amazon has a P-E ratio of 332? Makes sense. Okay. So let's just look at Amazon. Amazon right now is holding up near the higher part of its range. Is it going to give some of it up? Everything about this says, yeah, it could quite easily go back to the digestive phase between 138 and 135. Do the people who buy Amazon care about the P-E? Not yet. But they might. I'll be back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN Education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So just, I, I, I must just try to get into Paul's head. Paul, the people that trade Am or buy Amazon are probably very different to the people who buy GE. I like it when people do both. You've got, they're two different perspectives completely. In fact, look at the, the daily chart. They both look the same, but the weekly chart of GE is just fantastic. There will be a sudden slump 
into the 100 area. It's at 113 right now. But look at this. It's just walking the 9, not even the 14. So they different things all together. So I'm just trying to get it to you that you can't put people down for buying stocks that would have high PE. There was a time years and years ago when I started that I would choose one of the highest PE. Part of a portfolio always had something. I didn't even know what it was. It was just one of the highest PEs. And I knew from it, the history of looking at the chart. Whenever there was a major sell-off, the first thing that came back was this high PE stock. That's just the way it works. So I just wanted to clarify that. I, you know, it's just important to know your uh, who the who the people are, the who the different characters are in the play called the market. Uh, there's everybody. There's everyone. Uh, Adobe. Question about Adobe. Adobe is. It made a fabulous rally. It had this. This this here is actually a rogue wave. It, it looked like it was coming down uh, close to rogue. It's more like a right arm extension. But what it did is it a big spike to this five fifties. Uh, after and a gap on news, and then it, you know, stocks that start to fill the gap after a big news related spike and then go even lower. It says that was just an aberration. What happened there was just a real fake out, and that's what it looks like. But this is a fantastic company. Look, how many G slash C's have we seen that have gone to the D? There's your G slash C. Now I'm updating it on the weekly chart. It went to the D. Now it's due for a bit of a breather. Adobe, great stock, trading down four and a half at five seventeen. Um, Apple, A A P L. There we go. Apple, same thing. Great stock, having a really good digestive phase. <laughs> Indigestive, I should say. Um, down a dollar night, almost two dollars at one seventy seven. Made a peak. D, beautiful. We discussed this as it was happening. I don't know why I actually didn't short it for subscribers. Talking about shorting, we can go to something in a moment. Um, there's the arch formation, the dreaded H. It went from the cup to the arch, and bam, it gaps down. It's in trouble right now, and it's peak D E in the weekly, and a, and a probably a peak D in the monthly. Uh, look at the oh GSM. Talk about the uh, peak. Look at this. So leg D in the weekly chart of GSM, which is Ferroglobe PLC Specialty Metals. Monthly chart is still quite terrible. But look at this big spike here, rogue wave to the upside. Now, what, this is a perfect example of a rogue wave. It's, let's forget about the price. Imagine instead of 5.11, it was $51. I, it's much better to look at it that way. So it had this beautiful cup formation. I didn't uh, put in the left side, right side price time match, but it did that. Went to peak from the 463 low. It went to peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, peak E. Then a pullback below the 200 period moving average, but it had that sudden spike. So look what happened. That the nine period moving average was still green. This is the magnificence of these nine fourteen period moving averages. If you know, if you can understand them, there's there's, there's a whole. Uh, 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 there's, a, there's a, a methodology within them that should not surprise anyone when certain things happen. So look, the MACD's week, stochastic week, on balance volume is weak, 12, uh, 200 period moving average, it's holding, um, and, and then it goes underneath it on the, say, call it, it's called the 7th of August. And then what happens is there's a sudden news-related thing and it spikes, it goes above that peak E, and I called it a peak F, and it came back down the next day and went even lower down to 464. 464 holds above 463. So it means today's, again, a rogue wave is where there's a sign of the beach that says high tide at noon. At 12.06, there you are, you're at the, e the edge of the, the rocks, you're right there, you think, oh, I'm just going to sit and relax now while the tide goes out. Uh, you got, your, you got your, your soda, you got your food, you got your dark glasses, you got your, your suntan lotion, and as you're sitting down, splash, this huge wave comes along and you wipe your glasses, you look around, the tide's going out, you don't even know where it's coming from. That's a rogue wave. The tide's going out because all the technicals were, except in this case, the nine was still green. In today's case, the nine was still pink. So it means that this could give back a huge chunk of this big spike to 558. It's trading at 510 right now. It's up 5.59%. Earlier on, it was up a huge percentage, but that's a rogue wave. 
where everything said, you're absolutely right. Let's imagine it was 51. That's why I said let's imagine it was 50. Because that's a short, that's a short. You would have been perfectly correct in shorting it right there. And then you would have been. And then what happens in a rogue wave is that the price goes above the previous high where everybody said, I, I've had enough. I'm getting out. We had a, a great thing. I'm going to take most of it off. Um, I, I love it, but it's just, just getting a little toppy right now. And the shorts say, oh, my God, this is a fantastic opportunity to short. Well, what happens in a rogue wave, it goes above the previous high that you're looking at just long enough for the people who got out to say, oh, wow, I knew, I knew it. It was just one of my favorites. I, I, I should never have done that. How could you do that? I'm going to add back a little bit. And it holds up just long enough for them to add. And then for the shorts that say, what, who, who, where, where, what, what happened? This is, I mean, one day it's at 480 and the next day it's at 558. I got to cover. I got to, oh, it holds there long enough for them to cover. And then both parties look around and say, oh, no, $5.08. I could have just held on. So there you are. That's a rogue wave. So I'm saying now you've got to be really careful because it's showing you that there's a vulnerability to sustaining the, the upside. The weekly chart says, hey, I'm just stuck in a rectangle. What are you worried about? I go to the top, then I go towards the middle or even the lower part. That's where I am right now. I'm more towards the lower side. Hope you can help. I hope that helps you. A2. Um, next question is, uh, let's see, let's see. Can you check gold? It looks like it's on the move. Okay, let's check gold. GC. Actually, the question I had was GDX, so let's just start with gold. Now it's down three at 1940. One of the reasons is that the dollar is given back at the resistance at a leg E, maybe a PE, stored right at where? As I said, I'm going to be doing a webinar on these things. How important is the 200 period moving average? Well, it's 200 bars back. You don't even have to care about it when you're down here. But when you get close to it, look at the magnificence of this. Look how it held the price to the peak D, Chapman Wave peak D. Then on the 8th of uh, March at 105.88, it comes tumbling down, takes out the 100, 100 it tries to take out the 100.82 low of the 3rd of February. It does. It goes to 100.79 on the 14th of March, and then it starts to rally after the H goes to successful M pattern, makes a big cup formation, goes to peak D, then an E, just above the 200 period moving average, then an F, comes back under the 200, and then over it, and then under it, and it's goodbye. Do you care about the 200? No, not when you're here, but you do care about it there, that peak C, because it turns to a C minus, because it fails, and the plant is down to the most recent low of 9. And now we're at the 200 period moving average again. This is the dollar. I'll be doing gold as soon as we can. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. 
Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, so to answer the question on gold, let's look at the EUR USD. Well, the euro has uh, uh, the look because of the pink nine period moving average, the MACD, the stochastic at 19%, that it wants to retest the low 1.083. Uh, and it says 1.093. So, and the, and the uh, weekly chart has the look that the nine period moving average is getting closer. Let me just do it here so you can see a little bit better because it's important that you look at uh, apples to apples. So EUR, USD, and the daily is very poor. But in the weekly chart, it's still holding very well. There's the weekly chart. Look, it's holding well. Um, and so far, it hasn't turned pink. My eye, that's different to doing a whole technical analysis, but my eye says if this gray, that's the price of the, uh, that's the euro USD currency pair, if this starts to break lower, it'll drag the green period moving average lower. But if it just goes steady sideways, they can both go. But then you need to look at the USD JPY. And look at this, how positive, look how high the price is above the 9 and the 9 is above the 14. So let's go back to gold. We'll do it just with this particular instrument. This is saying that the technicals here are still very, very weak. It could have a bounce. There's no question about it. Look, it had a bounce there. It went right to the pink and then it pulled back, went right to the pink and pulled back. So the patterns are a little bit different. And if you look at the GDX, even that, is, is way different. This has already been negative, even though it popped to the upside. Look, it's been negative for a while. So, and I have to put silver into the kettle here as well, because the kettle into the pie, because that's just turned pink yet again in the arch or the inverted uh, V formation. So let me answer this as clearly as I can. Looking at gold as it stands right now, the day is young, it's down five. It's doing... To have a reversal of significance, even when you get the SMHs, look at that huge green candle from yesterday. Look at NVIDIA. Look at that massive green candle from yesterday, even with the follow through today. You need, it's the follow through that counts. So even though for subscribers we added uh, to the short side, we have to monitor this very closely because Look at that big move up, but the but the green, uh, sorry, the nine period moving average here is still very weak. Oh, wait, 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 what, what am I saying? Is this upside down? Uh, let me just <laughs> have a look at this. I do this all day. Yeah, the green is above. Oh, now the green is below. That's right. This is the this is the this is not the nine over the fourteen. This is the nine period differential. 
So let's go back and we were looking at, let me just go through this again, gold. So the unbalanced volume, that's the clue to me. And I'm saying to you that I think that gold is probably getting ready for some kind of an oversold bounce. And one of the reasons is it's gone below the 1940 low. It did it yesterday, but it closed above. Very often in this particular instance, if it doesn't close sharply, immediately sharply below the left side low, it says there's some kind of residual strength there. And now what I'm thinking is that the um, a bounce is is likely. And a bounce is only based on this nine period moving average stochastics at 7%. That's horrible. Just the way I say that a stochastic in the 95% area is fabulous. So this is unfabulous, right? It's the exact opposite. So yes, I think it is ready for a bit of a bounce. I would just treat it as a bit of a bounce because that weekly chart is suggesting that it's still got a little bit more to go to the downside. So the answer is as a trade, yes, if you want to put a stop in, I, I don't trade gold like this, so I can't even tell you what, what it would be. But I would say 1940 right now, if at any point during the day, I'll go to the 120 minute chart. Oh, let's just do that quickly because I don't want to run out of time. I've got some others to look at here. 120, 120, 120. Where did you go? There you are. Okay. 120 minute chart right there. Wait, why is it there? Is it the 120 minute chart? It is. How did it get so small? All right. So you can see this little double bottom low. There was this gap because there was a no trading, and then it, it plummets down. The low today is 1927. What was the low yesterday? A 1927.5. Am I correct? Is the low exactly 19? The double bottom low exactly? Yeah, I like that. So as a trade, I'm going to say yes. I think that this is going to ready as the dollar it just takes a bit of a breather. Um, and remember, the day is young, so you've got to treat this almost like three sections. Gold had the first early drop off. Now it's got this whole period between 10, 20, and I'd say 11. Let's go to 12, 10, 10 plus 12. If at 10 plus 12, it actually goes up five points, watch 20 plus 2 this afternoon, Eastern Time, to 310. If it gives back a chunk of that because the dollar has suddenly found strength, and look, the dollar's holding pretty darn well, then you've got to be careful. But as a trade, I think it has room to go. And where would it go to? Let's go back to the dollar, GC. Is this the move that says start buying all the gold shares? I, I, I don't think so. Although they've actually, look, NG's held well. ASA has held uh, not as well. G-O-L-D. Uh, G-O-L-D, is that correct? Yeah. Eh, not that great. Yeah, so I'm just thinking this is a trade. Whew, I should have said that right away. I think it's a trade, but I would have a, a, a stop at your entry point if it can go five points above that. And then I'd have a trading stop on portion of that, a three-point trading stop on the way up. I think it's going to stall at 1956 if it can get there. That's a pretty decent move, 12 points to 14 points. This whole area between the nine period moving average pink and the black 14 p moving average of 1963 says, yes, a bounce. I don't see more than a bounce at this particular point. All right. All right. A bounce is all you needed. Good. Okay, Glenn. <laughs> um, hmm. Oh, is that the Burns guy we're looking at? Mr. Burns. Uh, okay. Uh, let's just do this now. A question and see if it's okay. Yeah, I said I'd do some of the banks. Did I do that? Oh, I did that. Okay. So Citibank was the question. Citibank looks terrible. And what I'd said in the den was if it breaks the 42 support, it's at 43.75 right now, you have to consider that it could retest the 40 low that was right here. That was the low of 40.01. Missed a round number low. In October of 2022, this is the dreaded H. It could turn into a very successful H in the monthly chart, but a lot has to happen. Maybe I'll talk about that tomorrow. In the meantime, back at the ranch, this is a lowercase H that goes to a lowercase M. Oh, I wish all these things could just be automated, but they can't because things are always changing. Yeah, so that's there. Look at the XLF. Same thing. XLF, very weak today. 
Uh, no, not the same pattern. I shouldn't have said the same thing. I mean the same action. Very weak, down 50 cents at 34.34. Bank of America, which is what we always have. We haven't had it for a year, I think, now. Since I've been very, very cautious in Bank of America, we used to have it every year for a good, good percentage gain and then just got out of it and we wait until the next buy, 30 area, and then the 35 uh, was starting to look. Ah, at this time, we're just stepping aside. I'll be back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So, uh, uh, a question about Nike, and I think that you're, you do like these spiky uh, chart bands. It looks exactly like the GSM. Look at the GSM. Look at that right there. It's got the same spiky highs coming back down, and now you've got Nike, um, <clears throat> same thing. So Nike is trading uh, as sportswear, this is the B shares, trading down $1.50 at 106.12. It made this peak A, B, C, D, E, very quick, and then an F. And all the time, the technicals were starting to deteriorate, and now it's gone pink. So that just says to me, dreaded H in the weekly chart goes to a low case M, and then if at any point, so this is going to be, I agree with you, if Nike uh, starts to trade below uh, the 102.90, the low of the week of the 2nd of uh, June, um, 
Next level of support will be 101.68. It was the low of December the 23rd. And then it's kind of a free-for-all. So it's really important. And the fact that this rally went to a peak F way underneath the highs that we made back in the 114s in uh, June and July, this is, uh, it's not good. So I agree. Now, um, I had one, other, oh, SYM, S-Y-M. Uh, I had a question, where would you where would you add to it or where would I get in if I'm not in it? Well, we are in it from 21. It ran up to 64. We've taken chunks. We only have a little bit left on the uh, as a core position. But I'm saying hold off because these stocks, this is symbolic end-to-end -end -end AI, robotic warehouse automation systems. That peak F in the weekly chart was with very good technicals. If those technicals start to deteriorate, then that low that was made uh, on the week of the 28th of July, that could be a problem. That's a 35 point. So hold off, have patience. Hey, folks, stay tuned. Got great programming coming up. Steve will be here. All the, all the hosts will be here. Check out my open call, my daily newsletter. And I'll, I'm, I'm preparing a webinar. I'm looking forward to that. I'll be back uh, tomorrow. Have a great night. I'll be back with Tom at 3.30.